We're taking a little bit of a detour today from DIY to talk about math. If you're here because of the math and you like DIY, please consider subscribing. If you're here for the DIY, please stick around and see if you might like some math. So Nerdle is a Wordle type game except with equations. Easiest way to get a feel for it is to play a quick game. Let's try 8 divided by 2 plus 6 equals 10. Green is telling us right number, right location. Purple is right thing and wrong location, and black is not part of the answer. Let's try 39 minus 5 times 7. Order of operations matters. 5 times 7 is 35, so 39 minus 35 is 4. So the answer only has 1s, 3s, 6s, 8s, pluses, and minuses. That's only four numbers. A two operator equation is going to require five digits, so one of those numbers is going to have to repeat. Let's try 8 plus 6, that's 14, minus 11 would be 3. That's not so great for a third guess. Only two green and a lot of purple. So this equation has to start with an 8. It can't start with an 80-something because there's no 80-something that's minus plus is going to get us down to a single digit answer. So that means the minus has to be second. So we could subtract 11. 8 minus 11 would be negative 3. We could add 6 and that would get us to positive 3. But the last digit can't be a 3. So let's do 8 minus 13. That would be negative 5. If we add 6 to that, we would get 1. Have we used all of our information? The 8 and the equals are in the right spot. We have two 1s, one 3, and a 6. And that's the right answer. So we want to do some analysis to see if we can come up with a better starting guess. First, let's take a look at some of the rules that Nerdle follows. Nerdle does accept divide and multiply by 1. The result cannot be negative, but you can have negative intermediate results. So 1 minus 5 is negative 4, plus 10 is positive 6. That's legitimate. You can have 0 as the result, but you cannot have 0 as a standalone operand, and you cannot have a multi-digit number that begins with 0. The answer has to be a whole number, here 10, but you can have a decimal as you go along. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 times 4 is 10, and that's okay. And finally, you can't have any operators on the right-hand side of the equation, only numbers. It's also helpful to run through all valid equation formats. Here are all possible combinations of numbers, operators, and equal signs for one operator equations. You can see that the equal signs can only appear in positions 5, 6, and 7. For two operator equations, there are only four possibilities, and the equal sign can only appear in positions 6 and 7. And there are no three operator equations. There's not enough room in the eight positions they give you. So in the game I just played, I used 8 divided by 2 plus 6 equals 10 as the opening guess because it uses half of the possible choices. Then I used 39 minus 5 times 7 equals 4 because it uses the other half. Using most or all of your choices in your first one or two guesses is a common strategy, but what I want to figure out is if there is a more rigorous way to come about to the first best guess. I started out by identifying all possible valid equations. I found 17,723 of them. One way to analyze those equations is to look at probabilities. If you consider that each equation has eight possible positions for numbers, operators, and an equal sign, you could look at the probability that a number appears in any of those slots. You can see that one appears most frequently, followed by two, three, and four, but that zero hardly ever appears. We can perform the same analysis on the operators. You can see that plus and minus occur much more often than times and divide, with minus leading the way. This analysis tells us the probability that these numbers appear somewhere in the equation, but not where. Again, looking at the equation in terms of eight positions, it would be good to know where the numbers are most likely to occur. And here is that data. How do we read it? If we look at the zero, it's not very likely to occur in any of these positions, only 5% of the time. But when it does occur, it occurs most often in positions 2 and 8. So from this data, we can draw some high-level conclusions about what would be an appropriate guess. We can see that the number 1 is most likely to occur, and when it does occur, it's most likely to occur in position number 1. In the operators, we can see that plus and minus are most likely to occur, and when they do occur, they're most likely to occur in position 3. 
and the equal sign overwhelmingly appears in position 6. One decision you have to make when making a guess is whether to guess an equation with one operator or two. I thought it was interesting that of the 17,000 plus equations, it's about evenly split between the number of valid one operator and two operator equations. So if you're guessing a one operator equation, what does the distribution look like? This data doesn't give us great insight into what numbers to guess. 1, 2, 3, and 4 are slightly favored, and when they appear, they're most likely to appear in position 4. But in terms of operators, it tells us that plus and minus are most common, and they overwhelmingly appear in position 3. And finally, the equal sign almost always appears in position 6. The data for the two operator equations paints a little bit of a different picture. The number 1 is most probable among the numbers, and it most likely occurs in position 1. In terms of operators, minus is most likely, but the data is somewhat mixed on where that minus is most likely to occur. Whereas with one operator equations, the equal sign was most likely to occur in position 6, here it's position 7. Looking at the probabilities is, I think, useful, but it has limitations. It's looking at each position in the equation independently. So we might know that overall minus is preferred over plus and 1 is preferred over other digits. But it's not telling us how those things are best paired. What if, for example, most equations that had a minus didn't have a 1 at all? The better approach, I think, is to look at each equation as a whole. I started with the first equation on my list and compared it to each of the 17,723 other equations. For each comparison, I generated the data NERDLE would generate. The number of greens for identical matches and the number of purples for right thing, wrong place. Then I added up all the greens and I added up all the purples. Then moving on to the second equation, nurdling that against all others, and continuing one by one until each equation had been compared with every other one. We now have a list of all the equations, each with a green score and a purple score. I valued greens at twice purples, then added them to get an overall score. The outcome is this curve of scores, with the best at the upper right and the very worst at the lower left. And here are the top five opening guesses that method gives us. I was pleasantly surprised by these equations. They all have different digits, which intuition tells us is the best guess, and they use a minus sign and an equal sign in the locations the probability data would have suggested we use it. And then these are the worst equations, the absolute lowest scoring. But again, these line up well with intuition. They're repeating digits, and the probability data told us that using times and divide and zeros was less common. Certainly this is not the only way to analyze this data. I could have weighted greens and purples differently, or I could have picked a different way to evaluate how close two equations were than counting greens and purples. For example, when comparing one equation to another, we could ask how many equations would be left for our second guess and use that number as our metric. If you guys have other thoughts on how to look at the data, I would love to hear it in the comments, and maybe I can follow up with another video.